Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, 48 states with some type of alert, almost everybody here included, and the states that aren't highlighted have record February warmth on the way. We're talking blizzard warnings from Southern California to Minnesota and a storm that perhaps the Twin Cities hasn't seen in recorded history. I'll get into all of that in the timing. Also, the latest on President Biden's high stakes trip, promising more sanctions against Russia. As we learn, Russia launched a missile test while Biden was in Ukraine. That and so much more right here on GMA. Still ahead in the next hour of GMSA, days after a viral street takeover in Austin, San Antonio officials say they have a message for groups who want to try that here in the Alamo City. Plus, it's no secret that cases of identity theft are on the rise, how these are getting dirty to steal your personal information. And checking traffic right now on your Ash Wednesday morning, I-37 at Jones Avenue. No problems to report so far. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up in a couple of minutes. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. As President Biden wraps up his four-day trip to Europe, we're learning more about a failed ballistic test from Russia that came the same day President Biden was in Kyiv. The details coming up. Also this morning on GMSA, we're learning more about an overnight shooting near a Walmart on the city's southeast side. What police are saying about a possible suspect. Let's look out there with live cam. Don't expect to bring that jacket today. You will not need it, especially later this afternoon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. Rise and shine. It is Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, February 22nd. Thanks for joining us. And go ahead and get that cold coffee this morning. It's, you know, not too chilly out there at all. Yeah, about 70 degrees mm -hmm. right now. And uh, Mike Ostrich says add about, what, 15, 20 degrees to that for later today? Just about, yeah. yeah. We're going to be 20 degrees above normal in the upper 80s. Going to the rodeo, I mean, beautiful weather for mm -hmm. it. But hang on to your hat because it is going to be windy. We've had a little bit of a breeze so far this morning. And then the front's going to move through later on this morning. And the wind's going to really pick up. And the humidity's going to drop down. we got a lot of humidity out there right now. And there are a couple little leftover sprinkly showers, maybe one there in uh, northwestern Medina County. This is all kind of being pushed out ahead of that front, which is out to the west of us. And this is almost not even worth showing, just a, a sprinkle there. It's not going to have any impact or or try and lessen the the uh, high fire danger that's out there to the west later on today. Mid upper 60s, low 70s all around the area. We're about 25 degrees above normal right now. And of course, got a lot of humidity out there. But these numbers are going to be about a third of what they are right now later on this afternoon with that strong front that moves on through. So right now we've got a bit of a breeze where there isn't any wind or light wind. Watch out for perhaps a speck of fog to pop up just because of that extra humidity hanging around here. So once the front moves on through, then the red flag warning goes into effect 11 o'clock up until five o'clock this afternoon. We'll gust to 35, less than 15% humidity. This is for the hill country, the western half of our area, but even off to the east of that, even though if you're not under the uh, red flag warning, very high fire danger does exist. So outdoor burning, just forget about it today. Temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady for the next couple of hours. And then again, 9, 10 o'clock is when the front's going to move through here in town. And that's when the humidity just drops like a rock. Winds really pick up. We'll already be up to 80 at noon and then top off again, 88. 20 degrees above normal later on this afternoon. Now, humidity is going to be coming back here very quickly overnight, leading to some fog tomorrow morning. Won't be as hot the next few days. Still way above normal, though. Any rain chances down the road? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Anything going on on the roads? Yeah, uh, just a few stalls out there, Mike. So uh, as a reminder, you know what to do. Check your vehicle before you get out there and watch for those first responders that are working to help those drivers out. Now let's give you a quick look at the commute. 410 at Bassey, not a bad shot. Or, uh, and 37 at Jones Avenue. Really just going to see a few more folks get in the morning started early. Now that we have entered the 6 a.m. hour, we're getting closer to morning rush. But I wouldn't say right now is a time to rush out the door. You still have plenty of room out on the roadways. 35 Olympia is pretty busy, but 10 at WW White, not too bad there. Let's get you to the map. And as I mentioned, stalls seem to be the issue right now. We're seeing some of that along 410 uh, near 281, as well as 1604 and then uh, closer to Blanco Road, which we told you about a little bit earlier. So again, watch out for those first responders that are working to help those drivers out. And if you see any stranded vehicles on the roadway, make sure to move over or slow down. And if you plan on rolling into San Antonio this early,
early in the morning. Let's check those travel times. If you're coming in from Pleasanton along I-37 northbound, still pretty pleasant. 27 minutes to the Alamo City, around half an hour or so. Usual drive time for US 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Cashville. And that arrival from Lytle should take about 16 minutes. So everything looks pretty normal so far, but this is really that hour where things start to shift. So remember to drive safe out there. We'll continue to watch roads closely. And as always, make sure you do the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after he was shot in a Walmart parking lot on the city's southeast side overnight. This happened just before 11 p.m. in the 3300 block of Southeast Military Drive near I-37. Now, this is that busy part of town with several stores nearby, including Target, H-E-B, and several restaurants. So police say they are now checking all the surveillance cameras to get a better idea of what happened there. So far, though, there are no suspects. If you saw anything, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. Also new this morning, a woman is dead after her body was found in the middle of a busy South Side Street overnight. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what happened in the middle of South Stars and more near West Ansley Boulevard. People driving by the area overnight found the body of a woman in her 30s or 40s around 1.30 a.m. SAPD says they should know more once an autopsy is done. There are still a lot of questions after a deadly shooting near Austin Highway and Eisenhower Road. So far, no arrests have been made. This happened around 5 p.m. yesterday at an apartment complex on North Van Diver and the northeast side. That is where San Antonio police say a man in his 30s was found dead in the apartment's back parking lot. Right now, those details are limited. In your morning headlines, President Biden meets today with NATO allies of the eastern flank following an impassioned speech in Poland where he said that Russia will never win in Ukraine. As ABC's M1 reports, he's wrapping up his four-day trip to Europe, which started with his surprise visit to Ukraine. This morning, as President Biden wraps up his four-day trip to Europe, sources say the U.S. believes Russia carried out a test of an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the U.S., but it appears the launch failed. The test happening around the time Biden was in Ukraine Monday. President Putin in Russia has been highlighting its development for quite some time, specifically last year, about two months after the invasion of Ukraine. He was highlighting it as this most powerful weapon uh, that would be able to defeat any American defenses. The missile apparently able to carry 10 warheads and potentially travel farther and faster than old Russian designs. Sources say Russia notified the U.S. in advance of the launch. So potentially maybe this launch was pegged to the big speech that he gave before. Uh, the Russian Congress. But Putin didn't mention the launch in his speech Tuesday, instead formally declaring that Russia will be temporarily suspending its participation in the New START treaty with the U.S., the last pact that regulates the two largest nuclear arsenals. News of the missile launch comes on the heels of President Biden's fiery speech in Warsaw, Poland, where he vowed the U.S. and its allies will not waver. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. Never. And the United States, together with our allies and partners, are going to continue to have Ukraine's back as it defends itself. Today, Biden meets with leaders from the Bucharest Nine, reassuring those eastern flank NATO allies that his administration is on high alert for any threats that may be spurred by Russia's war. When Russia invaded, it wasn't just Ukraine being tested. The whole world faced a test for the ages. All democracies are being tested. President Biden is also expected to reassert to U.S. allies that NATO is stronger and more unified now than before Russia's invasion, before he heads back to the White House later today. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In other headlines, a woman in Oklahoma suffered major burns after her house exploded with her inside. Happened just last week in a small town just west of Oklahoma City. A woman had her propane tank refilled after several months. Authorities say she was bleeding out the air herself. Gas accumulated in the basement. And when the woman tried to relight her water heater, the home blew up. The woman is recovering but suffered burns over 30% of her body. Meanwhile, bride, groom, and wedding party had to be rescued in North Carolina when they got stuck in their hotel elevator. After their wedding on Saturday night, they loaded into the elevator of the Grand Bohemian Motel in Charlotte and got stuck. Now, firefighters eventually rappelled down from a few floors above to save the day. Unfortunately, the wedding party did not make it to their after party in time, but there is a happy ending. We're told the bride and groom say they are planning a honeymoon in May. Looking ahead, a first-of-its-kind vaccine designed to protect newborns against RSV, a respiratory virus, could be approved by August. 
ABC 7 News in Chicago reports the FDA accepted an application from Pfizer to review the potential vaccine. Apparently the vaccine would work by vaccinating a pregnant person who then passes on protective antibodies to the infant. Time now, 6.09 and 69 degrees for now. Still to come before 6.30, artificial intelligence is being credited for writing over 200 titles in Amazon's Kindle store. We'll explain more in your morning consumer headlines. And after the break, Americans in 38 states are in the path of a cross-country storm that's causing extensive travel delays. And outside with live cam as we wait for the sun to come up on this Ash Wednesday. Thanks for starting your day with us here on CMSA as we take a live look at San Antonio International Airport. We'll be back. Six thirteen. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. This morning, 150 million Americans in 38 states are on alert because of a massive cross-country storm. From snow in the Los Angeles area to heavy wind, ice, and blizzard conditions, this storm's got something for everyone. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has more. This morning, the Minnesota National Guard gearing up, preparing heavy-duty vehicles for rescues in the snow. A winter storm taking shape could make history. More than two feet of snow could fall in the Twin Cities. In the West, heavy snow keeping state employees in Utah home today and authorities issuing an avalanche warning. It comes after three hikers were killed in Washington, an avalanche sweeping them about 500 feet down a mountain. The same winter storm is bringing some of the coldest air of the season to California. Ahead of the temperature drop, strong winds hitting the Bay Area, damaging homes and knocking down power lines. And on the East Coast, a rare event for February, a possible tornado causing extensive damage in southern New Jersey. And then it got real dark and then things started. I, 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 I've never seen the wind blew like I did. At this apartment complex, dozens of trees uprooted, the roof split open and cars smashed. The wind started blowing at our sliding door over here, and then my wife and my one son were home with me, and then we just went into the bathroom, and then like 30 seconds later, my car's destroyed. It was over. Jacqueline Lay, ABC News, New York. Storms are also causing turbulence for travelers managing their flights across the U.S. More than 500 flights have already been canceled today, impacting western and northern states. Now that's on top of the 300 plus flights canceled yesterday. Travel plans are not expected to get easier for those flying out later this week. Strong winds and heavy snow have been forecasted across the west and upper Midwest. Now flight delays and cancellations are expected to increase through tomorrow. Nothing significant reported at our airport earlier this morning, but check ahead. That might have changed just a bit. Right now, 615. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Easy morning over here, guys, and that's what drivers can really expect if they plan to head out in the next few moments or so. 37 at Hackberry. Let's get a quick look at your commute on this Wednesday morning. 35 at Olympia. Things are, qu are quite busy out over there, but that's always a busy shot. 35, a lot of folks make their way north and southbound, so just prepare for some delays, and that is always expected. But for right now, 410 at State Highway 151 doesn't look too bad, and even 281 at Loop 410, uh, you can see just a few more folks getting their morning started early with us. So remember to drive safe and buckle up out there. Taking you to the map, no slowdowns reported just yet. So thankfully a lot of green out there, but still plenty of construction. And as a reminder, we get to talk about what's taking place here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. Yeah, barrier work. And you know this, it's been current for quite a while and we're going to see the work continue all the way up until February 26. It is overnight, so if you plan on heading out the door late in the evening or early in the morning, be sure to plan ahead because we will see a full main lane closure in both directions from Bandera Road to Marbach Road. But you know where to find that information along with other closures and traffic updates. Scan the QR code that is now on the screen that takes you to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of information uh, on your road travel plans. So just like again, plan your commute ahead of time. But it's been a nice morning for me, guys. Yep. That's good. Good news for you. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yeah, well, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're glad you're we're here. Glad you're we're glad you're here, here too. <laughs> Speaking, <coughs> excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. Speaking of the uh, roads, when you're out driving later on this afternoon, I got to get rid of this tickle in my throat right now. Uh -oh. It's one of those. 
<laughs> I thought I was the one who was going to have problems this morning. Ride the bus for a second, Mark. Okay. 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 Oh, oh, you get to drive the bus. <laughs> okay. Coffee. All right. Drink coffee. Yeah. So which one is it again? Uh, does <laughs> he know what he just did here? He the middle one. The... Okay, middle one. Okay, so after ah. school. Look at that. Yeah. Sunny, windy, winds gusting 15 to 25 miles per yes. hour. Wow. This is a usually warm afternoon out there. That's for what you've been warning school. us about. And we could see right. temperatures in the uh, uh, lower 90s yeah. in the Rio parts Rio of the Rio Grande Valley. Valley it's one of those little tickles that gets today. in your throat and you can't get rid of it. So yeah. oh, no. I will try and uh, go through this. <clears throat> Excuse drink? me. Did you, you have okay? a drink? Do you want another drink? I, no, I, I, okay. I'm just going to have to bear with okay. it here, So All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm ready if you need oh, me. No. Okay. Okay. Look at this beautiful view of the little crescent moon. It is a waxing crescent moon. Sorry about this voice, folks. And we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here as of right now. A couple little sprinkly showers in portions of the uh, hill country as of right now. <clears throat> and even one or two of them here in northwestern uh, northern Medina County. That's about it. Not much of anything at all. And computer models are pretty much uh, confirming that that what's out there to the west is just going to sort of fizzle on yeah. out. Yes, sir. Grab another <clears throat> drink. Uh, when you get to your regular maps, I'll jump in. OK, they're okay. they're right there. Now Mark's this ready. OK, got a little bit better. Here we go. And then we've got okay. a lot of clear skies hanging around here. Now, as far as the humidity is concerned, it's very, very humid as of right now. But that front's going to move through here about nine 10 o'clock, obviously sooner in portions of the hill country here in town. <clears throat> Right about again, 9, 10 o'clock this morning. Humidity is going to drop down like a rock. Winds are going to be picking up out of the west, and uh, that's what's increasing the fire danger around here. But the low humidity is not going to be sticking around forever because it's going to come right back in here overnight tonight. It's going to be very humid tomorrow morning, and we are going to be seeing probably some fog hanging around here tomorrow. So, as dry as it is today, here's the humidity that bounces back in here by tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's going to drop down somewhere what then by Monday but it's still going to be very warm all the way through the weekend. So here's the uh, satellite picture and the radar. Those couple little sprinkly showers out there right now. And then further up there to the north, that's what they're just talking about. This huge, huge storm system, which is coming, you know, extending from the Rocky Mountains up in toward the uh, northern Great Lakes area. Look at some of the temperatures up there. Not only are they just getting a ton of snow, 10 below at International Falls, 8 below at Bismarck as of right now. And and then on the flip side of that, we're in the, you know, we're going to be 20 degrees above normal later on this afternoon. So the forecast today, we are going to see temperatures get up to 80 at noon. Sunny, very windy. Again, the front moves through in the next few hours between 9, 10 o'clock here in town. Obviously, sooner in the hill country. Much drier air, very windy conditions. And then a high temperature today up to 88. Sunny and very windy. Like I said, 20 above normal. The red flag warning goes into effect at 11 o'clock till 5 o'clock for the hill country. Not here in town. Outdoor burning, just forget about it today because nobody's had any decent rain around here. So a very high fire danger does exist. And then tomorrow, not as warm, not as hot, I should say, but a lot more humidity around here. And it's going to be staying on the warm side all the way through the weekend going into uh, next week. Another front, maybe a couple of sprinkles here early Monday morning, one or two of them early Saturday morning. Not anything significant as far as any rain. So... You sound good. You Thank you. Those little tickles. Yes, yeah, no, I happen. understand. Yeah. I'm always afraid that'll happen one day when I'm posting essay live solo. And, oh, no. Yeah. And then you're in trouble. <laughs> All right, fresh cup of coffee yes. for you. Yes. You're welcome. 620, 69 degrees. Just ahead, Gen Z is behind Apple's dominance over Android. However, it's not due to anything special that Apple's doing. We're going to explain after this. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete long-acting HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or if you're taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. 
Ask your doctor about every other month Cabanuva. In this morning's GMA First Look, Buster Murdoch breaking his silence. Nothing but the truth, so help you God. For the first time, Alec Murdoch's son speaking publicly about the murder of his mother and brother, taking the stand in his father's defense, sharing how close they all were. I spoke to my mom every day, m multiple times a day, and the like for my dad and, and for my brother too. Alec looking on proudly, smiling at his son, who has been in court every day of this trial. Buster describing how his dad acted hours after the murder. His demeanor was, I mean, he was destroyed, he was heartbroken. I walked in the door and saw him and um, gave him a hug and just, just broken down. Can he speak? Not really. Is he crying? Yes, sir. And coming up at 7 a.m., Dan Abrams joins us live with how this testimony could affect the case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, more books written by ChatGPT are popping up on Amazon. Uh, the artificial intelligence bot is being credited as being the author of at least 200 titles in Amazon's Kindle store. A number could be much higher since writers inexplicably don't have to say if AI was used. YouTube music users now have more control over what they hear. Google is adding a radio builder feature, which gives listeners the ability to create custom stations based on specific artists. Now, up to 30 can be selected. The feature can be found in the Your Music Tuner section. And social pressure among Gen Z users is reportedly one big reason for Apple's dominance over Android devices. People born after 1996 make up a third of U.S. iPhone sales. A Financial Times study found they go for the iPhone to avoid standing out in a so-called green bubble during group chats. There's that fear of missing out. It's blue, blue bubble, and then all of a sudden pops up with a, one of those green bubbles. That's funny. It freaks some people out. That, I would like a different bubble, maybe like a, a pink bubble or there something, you go. just to be different. We can make that happen. We know people. <laughs> 626, 69 degrees. Still to come at 630, cases of identity theft continue to rise online. Why thieves are now fighting dirty for a chance to steal your personal information. And days after that, viral street takeover up in Austin, San Antonio, San Antonio officials rather, say they have a message for anybody who wants to try that right here in the Alamo City. A woman is found dead in the middle of a busy street and police are wondering if her death really was an accident. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you what they found that has them asking questions. And after a big crash caused a pedestrian bridge to collapse, we're gonna look at what could happen to the person who's responsible. In the air this morning, a ton of allergens and uh, some humidity, but it's actually not too bad out there. Very, very mild. We're hovering right around 70 degrees at San Antonio International Forecast. Mike has your Ash Wednesday forecast still to come. Hi, good morning, happy Wednesday. It is February 22nd, and a lot of us here suffering with allergies this morning. Uh, no doubt about that. There's quite a few things in there as things start to bloom as we head into the end of winter and the beginning of spring yes. here in South Texas. You know, and spring is not for basically another month Yeah. Uh, until toward the end of March. But yeah, I mean, it, it feels like it feels almost like summer today. We're going to be in the upper 80s. We've got a big front moving on through here, and no, it is not that kind of a front. It's actually going to heat us up and behind it, drop the humidity, and that's what's creating a very high fire danger around the area. As you can see, kind of hazy looking there in the skyline from our camera down at Brook City Base. 70, as we talked about, 20, 25 degrees above normal right now. Bunch of humidity. Dew point gets above 60. You feel it. And the wind is out of the south at 10 miles per hour. But that's going to be shifting around. Out ahead of this front moving through, there are a couple little sprinkles. I mean, yeah, you may run into one or two of them there. Northwestern Bear County, a couple of them by Concan, Sabinal. Not anything of any consequence. Again, if you see a sprinkle, um, that's going to be about the extent of it. 68 in Balverde, mid 60s Hill Country, 70 Pleasanton, Stinson. Everybody is way, way above normal right now. And again, we've got a bunch of humidity all around the area, but dry air will continue to move on in here. And that's going to take place right here in town between 9, 10 o'clock this morning, obviously sooner in portions of the Hill Country. Wind is out of the south to uh, southwest right now. Not too breezy, but
but like I said, it does get breezier later on this afternoon, gusting to 35 miles per hour. Do, uh, humidity, dew points drop down. Humidity is going to be only about 15% or less. That's what's prompting the red flag warning for the hill country, the western half of our area. And even though, say, Bear County, I-35 corridor, not under a red flag warning, outdoor burning, just forget about it today because the fire danger is so very high. And talking about those allergens, yeah, there is a list of them. Just about everything is showing up, even though everything's on the light side. Warm, humid, kind of breezy this morning. We've had some stronger winds earlier. Then the front's going to move through, like I said, mid-morning. And sunny, windy, those gusty winds out there, bone-dry air, but that's not going to last long. Humidity comes back in here very quickly overnight. Some patchy fog tomorrow morning will still be not as hot as today, but still up to 80, still 10 degrees above normal. And then going into the weekend, plenty of clouds, a sprinkly shower here or there. Rain is not, unfortunately, uh, any significance over the weekend. And it is going to stay, though, on the humid side. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, any problems at all out uh, there? Mike, uh, we were hoping that we would get through the morning without any major issues, but unfortunately, that has changed. 35 in New Braunfels, our first crash of the morning. Let's get a wider look and show you what you can expect out there. Because what we're seeing, slow-moving traffic, and it's in a typically busy spot for anybody that commutes in the northbound lanes of 35. Now this is was shot at 35 in New Braunfels Avenue and you can see that crash has impacted at least uh, one lane of traffic at this time. We have plenty of first responders out, out on the scene and from the looks of it, it could be a tow truck as well. We're going to have to continue to watch this closely throughout the morning, but as you can see, it is causing a little bit of a delay on this trans guide camera and that's exactly what we're seeing here on the map. 35 northbound, that's where we have that stretch of traffic that's already starting to build, so watch out as the commute does get going. And we're hoping everyone's okay out there, but just make sure that you drive safe. Giving you a wide look at the map, we can expect to start to, uh, to see a lot more of that color, that orange, yellow, and red really just take over our map because morning rush has started and we're going to see a lot more folks out on the roadway. But you have to watch out for issues like this. Again, 35 northbound in New Braunfels is where that crash has been reported. First responders on the scene will work to gather some details for you, but again, drive safe, hoping for a better update a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, San Antonio police are wondering if there's more to the death of a woman who was found in the middle of a south side street. They initially thought she was the victim of a hit and run. Now they are not so sure. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with more on this story. Katrina, what is making them question that? Well, police say that this woman had a wound in the middle of her forehead, so they are waiting for an autopsy to determine if that may have had something to do with her death. The people who found her were passing by in a car. They found her lying in the middle of South Sarsamora near West Ansley Boulevard, and they called 911 around 1.30 this morning. Police and paramedics arrived, but they quickly realized that the woman was dead. Now, if she was hit by a car, that vehicle already was gone when officers arrived. But if it turns out that the wound on that woman's head is the reason for her death, well, then police will have to open a whole different kind of investigation. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after he was shot in a Walmart parking lot on San Antonio southeast over, side overnight. It happened just before 11 p.m. in the 3300 block of Southeast Military Drive near I-37. That is a very busy part of town with several stores nearby, including a Target, an H-E-B, and many restaurants. Police say they are now checking out surveillance cameras in the area to get a better idea of what may have happened. So far, though, there are no suspects. You are urged to call San Antonio police if you saw something. And looking ahead to tonight, we continue our series Fighting Fentanyl. The synthetic opioid has caused a crisis, and unfortunately, it's affecting our kids. One local school district is seeing it close up. Now, the Hayes Consolidated Independent School District confirms at least four students have died after overdosing on fentanyl since last summer. And tonight, our Stefania Jimenez will show us what staff members and administrators in the district are doing to keep students safe. That's tonight on The Night Beat. Days after that viral street takeover up in Austin, San Antonio officials are now responding saying, not in our city. Mayor Ron Nierberg says when he saw the Austin video on Twitter, he got in contact with SAPD Chief William McManus to make sure the same wouldn't happen here. In a statement, SAPD writes, quote, our SAPD street crimes unit takes the lead on takeover meets. Along with our traffic unit officers, we utilize all resources, including helicopters, to coordinate a response and keep the public safe. We don't take this lightly. 
uh, it is a danger to the public. It's a danger to the police officers themselves. So we want to make sure that they have proper support. SAPD statement reminds people it's illegal to block police or other emergency responders paths. Doing so can result in a felony level offense and your vehicle can be seized. San Antonio police say a municipal court will decide what will happen to the person responsible for this big crash on the city's west side. That crash caused a pedestrian bridge to collapse yesterday. Now, San Antonio police say crews were working on the road when a city contractor drove away from the area but forgot to drop the truck's bed. That bed hit the concrete bridge, so it collapsed in the middle of the street. Luckily, no one was hurt. That driver was sighted. Looking ahead, Black History Month is in full swing and starting next week and can support black owned businesses and the San Antonio Food Bank in all one stop. Lim Dixon, owner of Root Salad Kitchen near Southtown, is celebrating Black Restaurant Week and giving back while he's at it. Next week, a portion of sales will benefit the food bank, which is constantly working to feed over 100,000 people in 29 counties. The restaurant industry is hard. <laughs> There's nothing easy about it. So to highlight what we're doing, especially um, um, in the black community during Black History Month, I think is, uh, is great. Um, it gives us a little boost that we need. He's a good guy. Black Restaurant Week kicks off Sunday, February 26th, runs through Monday, March 6th. You can read more about which businesses are taking part on KSAT.com. Also on our website at kset.com, it's Ash Wednesday, and that means Fish Fridays are returning to Bill Miller Barbecue for a limited time. Customers can order fried fish plates every Friday during Lent. The fish plates will also be available today. The fish plate combo comes with two sides and a tea. And they aren't the only ones getting fishy with their menu. <laughs> Whataburger is bringing back the What a Catch sandwich and What a Catch platter for Lent. The meals are back on the menu now through April 10th, which is the day after Easter, in case you're wondering. The What a Catch platter includes two fish fillets with french fries and tartar sauce. And time now, 638 and 69 degrees for now. After the break, identity thieves are getting better at stealing your personal info. So how can you keep your stuff secure with a little help from your Wi-Fi? 642 millions of people are affected each year by identity theft. It's big business for identity thieves and it's getting worse. The government says it received nearly 3 million identity theft reports in 2021, costing nearly $6 billion to consumers. Leslie Hudson reports on some secrets from convicted identity thieves. It can happen to anyone, anywhere. As we evolve in technology, it has become more and more of an issue. Reader's Digest asked convicted identity thieves. They said one of the easiest ways to steal people's money was to take a photo of their credit cards while they were being used at the grocery store. Another easy target? Paying bills the old-fashioned way. Thieves can just steal your bills from your mailbox and gain access to your credit card numbers, name, and addresses all at once. Opt out of getting pre-approved credit card offers by calling 888-5-OPT-OUT. Make sure all of your credit cards have an embedded chip which makes them a lot harder to hack. And you can now get safety cards to put in your wallet that won't allow thieves to scan your number while it's safely in your wallet. Always use your credit card instead of your debit card. If hackers break into retail databases, debit cards give direct access to your banking account and a thieves' least favorite credit card, American Express, because it asks for a zip code to finalize a transaction. A few more tips, never access your bank account over a public Wi-Fi network. The safest Wi-Fi is at your home. Just make sure your home Wi-Fi network is secure by requiring a password. I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. I never thought about somebody taking a picture of our credit card as we're, say, at HEB and, yeah. you know, is this the right card before you put it in or something like that. All right, Leslie also says when making online purchases, make sure that site is secure. And try to avoid throwing away anything that gives up your personal information. Yeah, you can buy a shredder for next to nothing on Amazon or at Walmart, something like that. And definitely take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. Time now is 644. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I just bought a shredder not too long ago, and I love it. Um, well, let's get a look at the roadways because this I'm not loving this. 35 in New Braunfels. We still have that crash that's been reported. Let's go ahead and bring that camera in and show you exactly what we're looking at out there because slow moving traffic remains. And even in those southbound lanes, it does appear we are also seeing some 
issues. I noticed some flashing lights out there and you may see that over there in the southbound lane. So we'll have to find out exactly what's slowing drivers down there. But right there in the northbound lanes is really where you're going to encounter bumper to bumper traffic. Just not a good situation, especially now that we are again at the start of morning rush. 35 northbound at New Braunfels Avenue is where that crash has been reported. And that is why we are seeing that buildup that is taking place past 281. So plan the commute ahead of time. Now, as of right now, this is the only major issue on the roadway, but just check that out. It just went into even a little more red, uh, giving you a wide look at the map. It does look like that is what we are going to start to see now. Lots of red taking over the map. US 90 at 1604. That is always a big trouble spot right there, and we can always expect to see slowdowns along 35 southbound. But again, the big issue is going to be right there along 35 northbound right at New Braunfels Avenue, and I'm just kind of combing through some of the trans guide cameras here, and I did also notice some flashing lights at 410 State Highway 151. Another busy spot. We noticed that we have our text out hero trucks placing out some cones. It does look like a stall vehicle at this time, uh, but it is going to get very busy out there. Notice we have a few of those folks out on the roadway. You have to be very careful out there, especially as they're working to make the roads a safer place. Those hero truckers yep. are, are awesome. They yes. do a great yes. job 24-7. Yeah. So yes. busy. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. It is technically still winter, but it feels like spring. It looks like spring. Well, it's going to feel like summer actually today. And this guy is loving the Aww. mountain laurels. <laughs> Get a nice big whiff of that grape Kool-Aid mm -hmm. that they smell like. Oh, that's so pretty. Those beautiful, beautiful lavender colors right there. And that great bee. And again, bees are around there. Leave them alone. Mm -hmm. We need those, those guys. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture, Yvonne. All right, it is a kind of a murky looking picture. I guess the best way to describe it just fuzzy looking it's all that humidity out there right now yesterday we did hit 85 degrees here in town 87 hondo and some 90s as expected there along the rio grande valley same situation and even warmer 96 Catula, laredo and even in and around the metropolitan area there's going to be some areas that do uh, hit 90 later on today forecast that at lackland uh, elmendorf 88 here in town basically 20 degrees above normal. The normal high is 69 and the humidity, which is very high this morning, is going to be dropping down. So right between 9, 10 o'clock. So that's when the front's going to move through here in town. The dew points start to drop down. The wind picks up out of the west and that drier air comes in here. And that's why we have a very high fire danger. And that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the day. Now, it's only going to make it so far and then the humidity comes back in in the overnight hours and that's going to lead to some patchy fog around here tomorrow morning and it's, then it's going to stay fairly humid throughout the rest of the weekend. Temperatures where we are right now, pretty steady and then we are going to be warming up very quickly. The front moves through again. 9, 10 o'clock in the morning here in town, not sooner in the hill country, and then we make it up to 80 at noon. The dry air heats up very easily, and if you're in the shadows, it's going to be on the comfortable side with this very dry air, albeit very windy, and then we make it up to uh, 88 later on this, this afternoon. This is one of those situations where if on a day like this, if you jumped in a pool and got out, you would actually feel very cold because with the dry air, the water is going to evaporate so efficiently off your body and it would cool you down that quickly. All right, up to the north, 13 below Cut Bank, 10 below International Falls, even as far south as Denver, single digits. Brutally cold air up to the north, and then on the flip side of that, we're definitely on the hot side of things, and that's where they're going to be seeing that huge, huge storm system. This one out there right around the Rockies is continuing to pump in all that moisture, so they're looking for heavy snow up there to the north of us. And for us, this just can't really move on in here with any cooler air, so we're going to remain in this southwesterly flow for the next few days. That's going to keep us on the warm side. It won't be as warm or as hot, I should say, as it will be today, but we're still going to be definitely above normal, averaging about 10 degrees above normal for high temperatures. That next low um, that may try and, you know, throw a couple of sprinkles in here early Saturday morning, maybe early Monday morning, that will be about it. Hopefully that next low out there to the northwest gives us a chance of rain sometime next week, but Again, that's still a week away, so a lot can change between now and then. 80 at noon today, sunny, windy, and then high up to 88 and very, very low humidity, very dry air, and that's prompting the red flag warning, 11 o'clock till 5 o'clock, western half of our area, gust to 35 miles per hour, like I said, bone dry air. Tomorrow, not as hot, still about 10 above normal, fog in the morning. Saturday morning, a sprinkle or two, 
late Sunday, Monday, a sprinkle or two, not any big deal. And these fronts that come on through here really aren't going to be cooling us down that much. We'll be back down to 75 next Tuesday, but yeah, still, it's all on the warm side. And no rain. Nope. Nothing significant. Okay, very different from the cold weather we were experiencing earlier this month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, Mike. 650, 69 degrees. And looking ahead, are you sending passive aggressive emails to coworkers? No. <laughs> Mark, Mark. <laughs> A new study has several trigger words and phrases you should avoid, Mark. How you can avoid high risk emails tomorrow on GMSA. We are a work in progress, Ms. Serna. <laughs> Outside with live cam right now, the sun is slowly coming up on this Wednesday morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 6.54 looking ahead. San Antonio Parks and Rec is holding the first of two tree giveaways this weekend. It's this Saturday, the 25th, starting at 8 a.m. at Rosedale Park. The sweet and green event will include lemon, lime, avocado, mango, and fig trees, to name a few. Trees, not margaritas, Serna. <laughs> there will be I uh, hear <laughs> 850 trees to give away, and it's one tree per household while supplies last. <laughs> if you miss Saturday's event, there's going to be another one coming up in March out at Wolf Stadium. We'll have all that information for you on KSAT.com. Can you imagine if people heard that script wrong? Either way, trees are going fast. <laughs> They're going fast. And today on GMSA at 9, it's a new science with Sarah. Sarah Spivey and David Sears will be doing a slime experiment with students at Brooks Academy Oaks on the northwest side. So tune in for that and more today on GMSA at 9. Also at 9, downtown San Antonio is continuously evolving. Tons of construction, more apartments, and more business spaces. But what's the city's plan for all these projects? On GMS 89, Max Massey shares what the president and CEO of Central San Antonio says about the vision of downtown 2.0 and gives us an update on what's happening with all the empty storefronts in our city. And looking out there with TransGuide, some flashing lights over at I-35 in New Braunfels. Let's check back with Stephen. Yeah, unfortunately, I uh, don't like to end the morning like this because that crash is still active, according to TxDOT. Let's get a quick look at 35 northbound. You can see it's pretty much still bumper to bumper out there, getting very busy. We're going to start to see a lot more of that congestion. 35 northbound remembers where we're seeing that buildup take place. Hopefully, we'll have a better update later on, but now we have a lot of slowdowns taking place. Check out that map. You can see it along US 90 eastbound as you're making your way into San Antonio from Castroville and of course State Highway 151 eastbound as well. Uh, we did have a stalled vehicle that we showed you earlier and that was along Loop 410 westbound at State Highway 151. That is cleared out, but right now this doesn't seem to be clearing anytime soon, Mike. And we are going to be clearing out later on today. We've got a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. Plenty of humidity temperatures, mid upper 60s, low 70s. Red flag warning goes into effect at 11 o'clock till 5 o'clock for western half of our area. Very dry, very windy, very hot. 88 high temperature today and a lot of clear skies out there. We're going to stay on the warm side all the way through the weekend. Humidity is going to make a big return by tomorrow morning with some uh, fog around there. Not any rain in, of any significance, unfortunately. Mm, very warm. We'll yeah. prepare for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Have a great day. Stay cool. We'll see you at 9.